You can have a good day, you can have a good race, you can do everything right and still not reach a goal. We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. One of the dangers of this very cool lifestyle is that we end up with a really, really, really strong highlight reel. And sometimes it can be tempting for us to only show the highlights on this channel. Over the past four weeks, we raced BC Bike Race and both snuck into the top 10. We then immediately drove to Downeyville, California, where Mackie had a super competitive result in the Downeyville Classic. Then another 16 hour drive and a 24 hour race with the best of friends. And after that, well, we found the wall. In today's video, we're gonna hit pause on the highlight reel and talk about the post-race blues and what happens when you don't achieve your goals or when you do, and then you have to decide what comes next. The point is, it's normal to kind of feel down after a big event or something. It is a thing that happens. Not meeting a goal does not necessarily mean you're a failure. Like, yeah, technically I failed at that goal. Don't know why I'm not having fun riding right now. Past few days, I have, to be totally honest, been feeling a little glum. I think it is definitely that mid-season, post-race slump. I know a lot of people have probably felt this too. You might remember that at the beginning of the year, I stated some pretty big goals for events this year, and that I did not succeed in a couple of those. We've done a really big thing, like we did BC Bike Race, and then we were just going, 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 went to Downeyville, I was Mackie's support crew, we drove all the way back here, did a 24 hour race. So the two I'm specifically talking about were my goals of a podium finish at BC Bike Race and winning Downeyville Classic. That didn't happen, either of those. These were some of my big goals, like BC Bike Race was a big goal for me this year, and now I'm just kind of like, okay, what comes next? I had good races at both. I performed well, I trained for it well, I raced well, I had good days, and I still didn't reach those goals. It's normal to kind of feel down after a big event or something. It is a thing that happens. That right there is the problem with results-based goals, is you can have a good day, you can have a good race, you can do everything right and still not reach a goal. And maybe that's because you just got unlucky and had a mechanical or a crash or something like that. Or it can just be that a lot of people who you were not expecting to show up, showed up and they were faster than you. I'm trying to pull myself out of the hole a little bit. I need to figure out like what the next focus is, what the next thing is. Um, but I also think it's really important to not do that too quickly and to spend a little bit of time being like, okay, did BC Bike Race, it went well. Like really, really pleased with that. I need to like, spent some time sitting in that before I just dive heads first into the next thing. For me, the reason I still set results-based goals, even though I know that they are things that you can't control, is because it gives me the necessary focus and, and it helps me prioritize the races. I had to train for those races. I had to taper for those races. I had to say no to other races and other opportunities. We're taking a week, like not entirely off the bike, but like pretty much off of any structured training. I did get back in the gym. I know that always makes me feel better. It, it took, took a lot of effort to motivate myself. Not meeting a goal does not necessarily mean you're a failure. Like, yeah, technically I failed at that goal, but I'm really proud of those races. I had really strong races. I showed up, I pushed hard, I, I gave everything I could at those races and it wasn't enough to meet my goals. But that doesn't diminish the success of those races. It actually just kind of gives me a little bit more fire. Now I want to go back and try to meet those goals. So that's where we found ourselves in early August. Tired from a big block of racing, proud of what we'd accomplished, but also feeling a little directionless and in need of structure. So we did what we always do in these situations and called up our coach, Mike. Like, I don't know what the next thing that I care about is. 
As usual, he made us feel a lot better. We discussed our race plans for the rest of the year, how our training would look a little different as we prepared for our next big event. And then he built up our training schedule for the next week and we were full steam ahead. An hour and 15 minutes into my ride. It's supposed to be three hours. I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. Like I'm going so slow. And like physically, my body actually feels totally fine. The power is actually high. I'm just like not having fun. Okay, maybe not quite. But it's important to realize when you need more recovery, even if you feel like you should be ready to train again. So we pushed everything back a few more days and focused on eating lots of healthy, delicious food, getting some good sleep, and of course, a few ice baths. All right, not so bad. And then we were finally able to get back into the training. So Sid is doing her 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, eight times, three sets workout. I basically did the same workout yesterday. Mike is working on getting us prepared for Trans Madeira and Enduro racing, where you're basically just doing a lot of sprinting. Go, go, go. So we are doing some much needed bike maintenance tonight because we're racing our bikes again tomorrow, <laughs> which I am actually excited about. I'm just been having like rough time recently. By recently, I mean like the past seven days. And like I'll feel really good in one workout. I felt really good in my opener today, so that's suspicious. And then like I went out to do a fun ride and I could not have fun. I could not, so I turned around and I came back. Anyway, basically motivation for riding has been low, so motivation for fixing my poor little XC bike has been very low. How are my tires doing, Mackie? You can see how much sealant was in them. They're right over there on the yeah. ground. I have not poured any out because there wasn't any to pour there out. There was none to pour out. <laughs> Frankly, the fact that I raced this bike in this condition at the 24-hour race is gross negligence. On my part, I'm not accusing Mackie, just to be very clear. I should have at least put more sealant in the tires because we could have guessed that the sealant was gonna be dry. I'm just really lucky that I didn't like flat at three in the morning in the dark. And I probably didn't even have a tube because I think Bo had my tube, you know? I don't know. And Bo, Bo's lights almost ran out. I mean, really, we, we scraped by. Scraped by. And one. <laughs> and one. I'm just saying low though, it could have gone very oh, differently. You know, gone. like I would have lost like an hour with a flat and Bo would have would still be out there if his lights has died because he didn't even have his phone. <laughs> one, one. What is this flowery amazing thing that you're wearing? So for Mackie's birthday, I got him a changing poncho. And then I also got myself one. Oh. Because I needed to get the free shipping. And you can loop, loop, take off your pants. I mean, I could honestly just see myself wearing this as a dress after bike races <laughs> through my model walk. <laughs> then... Go! Woo woo! Yeah! Go, 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 go! Woo woo woo! Yeah, Sid! Nice job! Woo woo! That's a good lead she's got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sid, good yeah, job. Yeah, go, yeah. go, go. Keep it going, keep it going. Up, 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 come on. Go, go, go. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Faster! Go, 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 go. Come on. Woo nice job! Well done. Okay. How are you doing? I'm hurry. It was like over 180 the whole time. <laughs> I was so you went hard. Well, that was kind of a fun start because it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but I could definitely watch Mackie let those two kids like duel it out at the front and then just like go by them, I think right before the single tracks. Great start, great start. Looking good. Get em. Keep yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah. 
Yeah, Mackie, go get him. Yeah, Mackie! Woo Mackie just went and got food. <laughs> I remember this food truck was excellent last year, too. Like, what even are Green we Green chili looking at? cheesy fries. Smiling and glorious victory. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta do your camera. Nice like, job, guys. Yep. All right, let's get you. If you'll mix, I'll do bolt checks. Last year at this race, I we did not do the fueling right because didn't Sean give you the wrong bottle? And he tried to pass <laughs> me a bar, and I dropped it, <laughs> which was like stupid because I was leading by like 20 minutes. I should have just stopped and picked up the bar, but I didn't. Actually, I think I did stop and get it on the next lap. Like oh, I dropped yeah. it, I, and I was like, I'm fine. And then by the time I got through there on like lap four, I was like, I'm not fine anymore. We're gonna pick this up this. off the ground and eat it. <laughs> oh, the smell of the turkey. Is that normal? I think it's normal. Yeah. I think I just don't want to eat it. We're just really, really used to races that start in the morning because pretty much everything we do all year is either a stage race or a more endurance kind of race. And all of those start in the morning. I, I like to start at 8.30 a.m. At <laughs> I am definitely a like 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. start person. Yeah. Like that's the window. Earlier than that and we get, we have trouble getting to the start line on time. What? dry. I fully admit that I'm not especially into eating right now either, but. Today we'll both be racing five laps of this four and a half mile course with around 450 feet of climbing per oh. lap. The course is super fun with some neat technical descents and some high speed sections through the scrub oak tunnels. Go. Doing something weird. That is no good. Yep, definitely going low. Okay, got some time to make up on Paul. Oh man, this thing is not seating. Come on, come on, come on. I need you to seat, I need you to seat. might have done it. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Focus, 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 focus. Is that buddy? Uh, yeah, when we get a second. Okay. I'm probably gonna have to stop and put a tube in, so. I guess this is my opportunity to test 
the run flat of this liner because I've used up my CO2s. I can confident tell you, confidently tell you, friend, a flat tire is slower. All right, how much can we rally with this tire and an insert? be worse. Flat tire things. Hey, I gotta go fix a flat. Okay, here's the test. How fast can I fix a flat? Okay, use this as a recovery. There's nothing you can do. Don't panic, because that just slows everything down. Got my tire. Oh, did I not put sealant back in here? I did, phew. And then a tire lever and Allen keys. Okay, might as well get in the shade. Sid was saying, if she were to get a flat, she would want it to be in this race because it wasn't one that we've, you know, been training for all year or anything. And it would give her practice fixing a flat tire during a race. I, well, she has a point, but it really would have been nice if I just hadn't flatted instead. Through axle. Clutch back on. Certainly have been worse. Could have been worse. So if Mackie's doing 20 minute laps, he will be through at like what's like an hour 18 on my clock. Because we started two-ish minutes behind. I bet he's doing faster than 20 minute laps. Well, just had a literal head-on collision with some random guy who was like, oh, I didn't know there's a race going on. We just rode through an absolute bucket load of tape. Yeah, I just hit him in that blind corner. You see a spot? Thanks, man. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Keep it up. All right, right up here where it widens up, I'm gonna go left. Thank you. Thank you. You good? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Keep it up. All right, last blue bitch. Nice and smooth. Not perfect, but not bad. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that's my leg. 
I have gotten very tired. Okay, I'm almost there, but like, whew, come on. So you feel a little bit more out of the body. Good? I'm fine. I, I, I flatted. I'm okay. <laughs> I was a little worried when pa Paul passed me, but I figured someone would have told me if you were hurt. Dead. Were you still second? No, I, uh, I had to put a new tire on. A new tire? <laughs> a new tire. <laughs> <laughs> While Mackie obviously would have loved to win this race, he did give us all a masterclass in mid-race tubeless tire install, and this race gave both of us what we needed to feel reinvigorated for the rest of the season. Despite the brutally hot temperatures, our power numbers were good and we felt strong and consistent and even beat our best lap times from last year by significant margins, and it was not nearly as hot last year. We feel good right now and stoked for one last hurrah in 2023 which means it's time to switch gears and start looking for our enduro legs. Mm -hmm.